Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weezy Died Laughing and I'm here with another weekly wrap up and we're going to get straight into it because I've a lot to say about all the books that I read this week. The first book that I read this week was The Other Half of Happiness by Aisha Malik and this is the second book in the Sophia Khan series, the first one being Sophia Khan is not obliged. And I read that on, um, or I listened to that on audio um, a couple of months ago, so I was really excited to be approved on Neck Alley for the second book which is out this month. Um, so obviously that is The Other Half of Happiness. So I went into this book feeling really really excited, I could not wait to read it and I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I really really hated this book, I had a lot of problems with it but unfortunately like I can't really go into detail about a lot of the problems I did have with it because there are huge spoilers for the end of the first book. Um, all I'll say is I was really disappointed with a lot of Sophia's decisions in this book, I feel like she did not use her words. We had some problems in the first book where Sophia just wasn't speaking up at times, she was doing things that in her heart she knew she didn't want to do which ultimately led to like complete disasters um, and really hard times for her and I felt like at the end of the first book she'd kind of of, she'd kind of come to terms with what she needed to do for these things not to happen and we'd had a bit of self-improvement there where with this book I felt like she went another five steps backwards and it was just so so frustrating and um, a lot of the characters decisions in this book just did not make any sense a lot of things that came out into the open in this book there were some secrets that were laid out into the open and um, that really kind of derailed Sophia's plan for a lot of the book like none of it just made any sense to me and it really didn't make any sense in comparison to the first book and what we learned about characters in the first book um, and I just really really hated it and um, I just felt very exasperated for the entire book at Sophia and other characters I felt quite depressed during this book like the first book is is there's like serious moments there are sad moments but there's also a lot of funny moments in this book I felt like it was becoming so kind of serious and depressing it lost all of its funny moments that had made the first book so good um, one of the main, one of the only good things about this book was her mother. Her mother had a really, really great kind of sideline story, um, and I really, really enjoyed all of her interactions with her mother and the way her mother is kind of uh, stepping forward in her own life and doing things that she herself wants to do now that you know her daughters are growing up. Um, and are you know going up and getting married and becoming like independent women and now she has decided that she wants to do that and for the first time in her life she's going to be start thinking about herself and what she wants to do um, and not just what her family wants to do and I really really loved that in the book um, but everything else is just really really flat I really really hated it if you did read Sophia Khan it's not obliged and you do know some of the characters or if you've read this book and you want to know my complete feelings on why I really really hated this book um, I I will um, leave my reads review down below like I always do with all the books I review but yeah this book was just so disappointing I just felt like throwing it across the room and I finished it because it was just the ending was just so annoying I absolutely hated it it just left me feeling down and sad and depressed because I um because I listened to the first book um all their all the voices for this book, for the other half of happiness, were very, very clear in my head, and I did actually really, really enjoy that. Having listened to the voices in the first book, and um, it just made I don't know, it just made the second book quite fun for me because I would know how they would pronounce a lot of like their nicknames and stuff like that, um, and how they would talk to each other, and I just really, really enjoyed that. But ultimately, as I said, I didn't like this book, and I gave it a two um, out of five stars. Thankfully, the next book for me was better, and it was The Grey Wolf Throne by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the third book in the Seven Realms series of which I've been reading and the last few months and I've been really enjoying all of these books have been a five star read for me this one was no exception it was five stars I absolutely loved it and um, obviously this is um, a fantasy series that revolves around two characters there is Raisa who is the princess um, of this land and then there is Hans Alice just kind of like an ex street lord and his um, relationship with Raisa kind of develops throughout the whole into like the last three books that it has developed slowly and surely and in this book they're finally kind of properly working together and um, for the benefit of their country and we really see Raisa kind of come into her own into her own power and um, as a kind of a future ruler um, and you know kind of making a lot of really great decisions for herself and for her people and then also um, we see Hans step up a lot in in this book as well and kind of finally get a place like I guess in the spotlight that he deserves and not just for being like a street lord and um, we see him become quite respected and quite fond over and I really really loved that um, and I'm gonna say like 
I've always been attracted to hands through this, all the other books but for some reason in this one it just like multiplied twofold. I was just extremely attracted to him for this entire book and um, I'm not sure exactly what it was but like I just really wanted him to like to come to life and take me away in this book because I loved him so much and um, he yeah, definitely he's definitely one of my like top book boyfriends of this year so far I just adore him and um, I just really really fancy him um, so yes I really enjoyed this and there was one point in this that I loved and it was Prince Princess Raisa was in a, a council with all her kind of councilmen and she looked around and she actually said um, there was a quote in the book and she actually said why are there no women on my council we need to fix this and I just loved that, that was there I just thought that was such a brilliant point for her to make um, and for it to be put in this book that like Princess Raisa she wants female leaders in her council she wants female voices and um, she doesn't want to be alone as a female ruling this country she wants help from other authoritative clever women and I just adored that and um, so yes I gave this a five out of five stars I cannot recommend this series enough I cannot wait to read the next one which I think is the last one which also kind of makes me sad because I just want to keep them going forever and um, but yeah I adored this the next book I finished was Empire of Dust by Eleanor Herman and this I got for review um, a few months ago by Harlequin Coutine slash Paper Lantern Lit um, and I reviewed the first book which is Legacy of Kings um, in January and it just took me a while for some reason to pick up this one but I'm really glad I decided to pick up this one this week because I really really enjoyed it. This is a series that follows a teenager Alexander the Great while he is still a prince he's not quite a king yet and we have a bun bunch of other characters there is a country girl called Kat who has a special affinity for animals there is Alexander's best friend Hephaestion there is his sister Sinane and um, there is Kat's kind of sweetheart and a boy she grew up with called Jacob and you just have a lot in this book with warriors, magic, princes, princesses um, and there's just so much going on in it. It's really really great. Um, the, for the first book I had said that I felt like some of the characters lost their voices a bit because there were so many kind of um, points of view at different times. Every chapter jumps between another character. Um, I think because that happened in the first one I was more used to it in this one so it didn't actually bother me as much as it did in the first one and I found myself I found that I got into the story very quickly even though it has been a couple of months since I read the first one and um, I was I was still quite clear on the story I was able to follow it very very quickly once um, I picked it up um, and I really enjoyed this one a lot more now I can't say like a whole lot happens um, but it does make me excited for the third book to see the conclusion which I'm pretty sure this is a trilogy so I think the third book is the last book um, so I am looking forward to seeing the overall conclusion and um, I did like to see where a lot of the characters went in this one and I think I think one of the characters came out as asexual in this one and I really really enjoyed that or like I I took a quote that he, I, I took a quote as him saying that he was he was asexual and um, but I'm not sure if if he did or not and um, so I'm just going to read it out I'm just going to say blank for the name because I don't want to spoil anything um so it's that blank can love and yet not love, desire and yet not desire, that all of his decisions and loyalties are of the mind, not the body, that the body is but an imperfect vessel of the soul of a man, his ambition, his strength, his destiny. And I'm not sure, like, I kind of came that, like, I'm not sure if it's maybe bisexuality or asexuality, but I don't know, I just really love that that was put into it. I'm really, really excited to see where that goes from here um, and I just like that was put in as well um, and I will say as well um, Alexander's sister Sinane that's in this one I love her she is just a very complicated character I love um, she didn't have like that much in this book but she goes somewhere where I feel in the third book if she's in it she's going to be absolutely really really cool um, and I think she's kind of modelled on um, Cleopatra and um, that's who she's kind of supposed to be so I can't wait to see where she goes in the third book if that's what it is I feel like she could probably have her own spin-off series if she is supposed to be based on Cleopatra and um, I feel like yeah that's definitely kind of a spin-off series that could happen so I can't wait to read the third one even just to see where she ends up and what she does and um, so I gave this a four out of five stars the next book I read was actually one I've been listening to for the past month and it was The World Beyond by by Sangeeta Bhargava um, and this one I didn't really like this one I also gave it two out of five stars too and it's set in 1856 um, or like 1856 1857 in India during um, while Britain was um, under well Indian was under clon colonial rule by Britain um, and it's to do with two different characters one of them is Salim who's kind of a prince um, in this area of India um, and 
his father is under a lot of pressure from the British kind of corporation or the British government um, and his people are being treated really really badly and there's also Rachel whose father is a commander in the army um, and her and Salim end up uh, kind of growing a friendship between their shared love of music and they end up falling in love and it's kind of this war-torn star-crossed lovers kind of tale um, under kind of while Indian India is under colonial rule and the people are being killed and really really like badly treated by the British and eventually there is a rebellion against the British and um, which Salim is obviously involved in um, and Rachel is not. So this one just kind of felt flat for me. I just didn't really feel the story at all. Um, I did feel like I did learn quite a, like, a good bit about like how the Indians are treated by the British and I felt like maybe a hit home for me seeing as my own country has gone through something similar with British rule and you know it's obviously very very like in our, deep in our own history so there was just some kind of things that I could definitely like um like like relate to um in this kind of tale again um I do feel like I learned I learned a good bit that I didn't know before um but there were just I don't know there there was just something about it that just didn't grip me at all um there was one point though that Rachel like she told Salim she hated him because she found out that he had been a part of the rebellion against the British and I was just like how dare you how dare you talk to him like this when it's your people that have come into a country that is not their own killing the natives treating them like like pieces of garbage uh you know just oh my god it just made me so angry to the fact that she thought she was white to tell him that she hated him because he had you know stood up for his people and joined a rebellion and oh it was just really really annoying it just really irritated me I was very angry at the British for a lot of this book because they were just not very nice people in it at all and um, apart from Rachel most of the time she was obviously quite kind and lovely um, but yeah I just it was just one of those kind of books that just kind of made me angry but at the same time I just wasn't that into it either so if that makes sense so I gave it a two out of five stars and the last book I have um, completely finished this week is The Cows by John O'Porter and this is when I got off Neck Alley and oh my god I adored this book this was a five out of five star for me absolutely brilliant this is a kind of um adult contemporary I guess uh chick lit but a feminist chick lit um and it follows three different women, Tara, Cam and Stella. Tara is in her 40s, she works um, as kind of a TV producer um, and basically something happens in her life, there's like this massive public scandal um, and it kind of destroys her life. There is Cam who is in her late 30s um, and she is a feminist blogger and she like enjoys a very healthy sex life, um, she talks very openly about her sex life and a lot of different things on her blog, um, she wants to remain child free, she doesn't want children and she talks openly about that and we kind of see the challenges she faces from the public because of her opinions um, and also kind of how she deals with things like online trolls and stuff like that and then there's Stella who's in her late 20s um, she is actually dealing with the um, B or C A gene I think it is um, which uh, which means that she has like an 85% chance of getting cancer which killed her mother and her twin sister um, so she's having to deal with the fact that she will probably need surgery to remove her ovaries and her breasts um, at some point in the very near future and she's desperate for a baby which ends up like having a baby naturally before the surgery which ends up in ma her making a decision that is absolutely batshit crazy um, in order to get a baby and she also ends up kind of becoming a bit of a troll herself online uh, through kind of the misery of her own life we see that she ends up getting kind of satisfaction from being horrible to other people and I really kind of that was what that was a very interesting point um, of this book for me that we kind of it's kind of that kind of unveiling of trolls that a lot of the time there are these people that are sad in their own life um, and they feel that their misery is kind of combated by making other people miserable that their misery isn't so bad if they can cause others pain um, and I just thought that was very very interesting to say that no, you don't actually have to fear trolls like that because a lot of the time they are these just people who are sad in their own lives hiding behind a computer screen and I just thought that was great because obviously Donna Porter is quite a celebrity herself um, and her husband is a celebrity he's an actor and a comedian Chris O'Dowd um, 
so she's probably had to deal with online trolls and I say a lot of that has come through in the book has come through from her own life and her own personal experiences I would presume um, so I just I just really enjoyed that I really enjoyed Cam's discussion about wanting to remain childless um, and how she combated the people saying you know that she was just a selfish person that she was wasting a good womb that this that and the other that she was saying that mothers you know women who were mothers didn't weren't worth anything and I, I just really really enjoyed a lot of her discussions on that and we see her blog posts and her blog posts are great um, and I just quite enjoyed that as for someone who isn't hasn't really made a, a, a concrete decision whether I would want to become a mother at any point in the future and um, at the moment it it is definitely not on the cards for me I can't see it any time in the future but I have no idea if that could change in the future and I just really enjoyed seeing that that point of view of someone who obviously isn't real but would there's a lot of women who would feel like her and just to see that kind of validated in a book as well is really really great um and then also, also Tara who is a working mother and kind of the everything that she has to deal with like misogyny and work the fact that she'll come into work two hours early so she can leave a little bit early to collect her child from school on certain days and she ends up getting um kind of all these comments from like her male colleagues saying it's not fair that she has to leave early and they end up working harder than her even though she was in two hours earlier than them and you know a lot of stuff that like you know probably does happen in the workplace and um, is kind of come through in this book but this book just tackles everything it tackles like masturbation and um, it tackles abortion and um, it tackles as I said misogyny and work the pay gap uh, casual sex uh, being a working mother being a single mother uh, all this type of stuff it just it just brings up everything and it's kind of saying like it's very honest it's very unapologetically honest very laugh out loud funny it's so funny I I laughed so many times like in public while I was reading this book there are just all these moments and there's also all these moments that will literally make you go oh my god what the effing hell is going on like it is just it just had my eyes popping out it had me laughing uh, it was just such a range of emotions in this book and um, it's absolutely brilliant I cannot recommend it enough I loved it um, so yeah I really 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 enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it 5 out of 5 stars and the last book that I've almost finished reading I've only like got a tiny bit left of it is In Dublin's Fair City by Reese Bowen and this is the sixth book in the Molly Murphy, M Molly Murphy mystery series that I've actually been listening to an audio so this is the first book that I've actually read and I was a little bit afraid that like my reading would be different because I've read it but thankfully Molly's Molly's voice is just as charming when you're reading it as when you're listening to it um, and this is actually Molly actually goes back to Ireland in this one for a job that she gets um, to track down someone's long lost sister and um, so she ends up going back to Ireland there's a murder on the ship while she's going back so she ends up getting like involved in that um, and then she also ends up getting involved with the freedom fighters back in Ireland when she gets there as well like through no fault of her own she just kind of ends up becoming entangled in all of this um, all of these different things um, and she has to deal with all of that and I really really enjoyed that. I'm actually glad that I didn't listen to this one because obviously she's in Ireland so there's going to be a lot of Irish accents and the narrator that had taken over the audiobooks can't do Irish accents that well so I'm really glad that you know I was able to I was able to uh, <laughs> read this one and be able to do my own Irish accents obviously in my head so I wasn't listening to someone butcher it um, through the entire book so that was that was lovely um, and there's also she kind of becomes like she's also investigating her investigation she's kind of going into the poetry and the drama circles so you see her kind of uh, rubbing shoulders with like Yeats and James Joyce and it's just really funny like um, so I quite enjoyed that so I think it's probably going to be a 4 out of 5 star for me I'll probably finish it later um, and I say it'll be a 4 out of 5 stars because I'm really enjoying it and then the book I'm going to be starting tonight as well is The People at Number 9 um, by who is this by? Felicity Everett, sorry, Felicity Everett, and this is kind of a thriller book about a woman who becomes obsessed with the this couple um, in number nine, I think, and they kind of become, they're not quite who they seem to be, I think, um, but I'm reading this for a review, so I'll have a review of this up on Tuesday, um, so I really have to crack on and get reading it um, and have that up. So that is everything that I've read this week, please let me know what you guys um, have been reading, what you think of the books I have read, and I'll see you guys again next time.